Uh, at this time, the Chair would recognize uh, Mr. McCall of Texas. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, Chief Fisher, I, I would also be interested in your answer to uh, Ranking Member Cuellar's uh, question. If you could forward that to my office as well. I will, sir. Uh, that answer. I, I appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Uh, Borkowski, uh, it's good to see you again. I, I want to allude back to, I guess it was about a year ago, you and I and Congressman Cuellar were um, down in Laredo on the Mexican border and ended up uh, like at midnight, like something out of a movie, with this uh, equipment from the uh, Department of Defense. And um, uh, I think you and, and, and I and Congressman Cuellar were very impressed with this technology. Can you give me an update on the deployment of this technology and what your plans are to use it? Yes, thank you. And I also recall that session. Um, in fact, if you were to look at the new Arizona technology plan in total, uh, it includes elements called Agent Portable Surveillance Systems, APSSs, which are tripod-mounted, long-range infrared sensors. Those are among the things that we looked at there. So we are, in fact, in this plan intending to procure those as part of the Arizona deployment. Uh, we're, in fact, procuring them through an Army vehicle. So yes, we did take advantage of what we learned from that. We did incorporate it into the operational assessment the Border Patrol did, and we do intend to procure those systems. I'm very glad to hear that. I, I, I look forward to its um, deployment across the entire southwest border, including my state of Texas. Uh, we have 1,200 miles uh, with Mexico. And uh, Mr. Stanner, you mentioned that um, $755 million uh, in Arizona alone for technology. What does that leave for the rest of the southwest border? Well, I guess that depends on what uh, the Congress appropriates. But that's what yeah. the, uh, the expenditure is envisioned in just Arizona alone. Yeah. Uh, and, and I, you know, again, I think Congressman Quayer alluded to the, the politics of the situation. It just seems like Arizona is getting all the attention and Texas is not. Uh, and I just want to impress that upon you that, and I understand the apprehensions are very high in the Tucson sector, but um, we do have a large you know, 1,200 miles that we share, and I think you know, uh, our state should be given that attention as well. Uh, Mr. Stanton, you mentioned that this would not be completed, the technology piece on the border would not be completed until 2021 or as long as 2026. Is that correct? Uh, that's our understanding. Um, they're starting with Arizona, and then they'll go to um, neighboring sectors, but by the time this sequential process is finished with the AOAs and the judgments made by the Border Patrol and the fielding of the technology, it would be 2021 to 2026 before the last southwest border uh, sector okay. would be committed, then to the northern border. Okay, that, that, that's a long time. I and mean, that's, you're talking 10 to 15 years. It took us a decade to put a man on the moon. And, and yet we're talking about camera surveillance, you know, that kind of stuff, that technology that Quite honestly, the uh, Department of Defense has, has already uh, manufactured through R&D at the taxpayer expense. I don't understand why, why this takes so long. And you have a crisis going on down there. Uh, everyone knows it. I mean, we, we know how dangerous it is in Mexico, and we know how dangerous it is at the border. Why can't we ramp up this process? Why can't we expedite it? And what can we in the Congress do to send that message to the administration that we need to do this faster? Mr. Barkowski? Uh, yes, sir. The, certainly we could buy more and we could put them uh, wherever we need to. And in fact, the, the plan, one of the differences in the new plan is that it actually has the flexibility to adapt as the threat evolves. So it's very much focused on Arizona because, as you noted, that's where we have the over 200,000 apprehensions compared to the rest of the border. We do expect things to evolve and we actually have funding in the budget in the President's request for what we call emergent requirements. Among other things, that is to deal with what we see as a result of tightening up Arizona. In addition, the systems we are buying are systems that the military has provided. There are a whole set of these things, the integrated fixed towers. There are such systems already existing by the military. So we can buy them. The question is, where do we put the first ones and why do we put them there? Uh, however, we will uh, select procurement vehicles that allow us to respond. If there's a movement of traffic somewhere else that requires us to deploy somewhere else, we can shift our plan to adapt to that. And uh, I appreciate that. I hope we can uh, do it more expeditiously. If I have to go home and tell my constituents it's not going to be until 2026 that this border is secure, uh, they're, they're not going to accept that message. And, and I think they're right in, in not accepting that. Lastly, on the, on the question of the National Guard, uh, General, uh, <clears throat> your deployment will end in June, is my understanding. Uh, what is, what's the plan? Congressman, uh, 
we, we, we're not the, uh, those that create the plans. Uh, basically, unless there's additional funding, uh, the mission is going to end. Uh, this is the Operation Phoenix mission. Uh, the counter drug program, uh, that's still continuing. We have about 140 personnel that are continuing doing that mission, uh, which we've been doing for over 20 years in support of law enforcement. So it, it, it's over. The National Guard will be removed from the border as of June. For Operation Phoenix, yes, sir. Yeah. So, and I was always concerned that, you know, you were, your hands are tied. You're in a support role, not operational down there to begin with. And I understand posse comitatus and the concerns there, but, you know, they weren't doing what they were trained to do, essentially. I talked to my governor about it. He said, you know, eventually the guards acting as a bit of a band-aid. We need a, a permanent force down there. We talk about technology. You need the response piece as well, the, the manpower to respond. Uh, Mr. Barkowski, what, what are we going to do about uh, a transition as the, the Guard uh, deploys out of the region? Well, I, I think I would offer that to the Chief. I could give you my perspective, but the Chief is the operational expert there. Would that be something? Uh, chief, do you have a response? Uh, yes, Congressman. As a matter of fact, uh, along Texas and across the other three states as well, the majority of the National Guard are providing what's called um, entry identification teams. Um, so lookout post, observation post, where National Guards men and women are put up on a high point um, with uh, optics, daytime, nighttime capabilities to inform the Border Patrol agents where the activity is. Uh, those missions and that requirement will remain, um, and Border Patrol agents will be doing those if those EIT sites are still required. Well, I, I, it seems like there's going to be a big gap uh, uh, missing as the Guard pulls out, and I think uh, I'd like to see a very thoughtful plan as to how to replace them. So uh, with that, I yield back, Madam Chair.